Chris watched the film yesterday <laughs> of the 49ers and the preseason game against the Chargers. Trey, uh, Trey Lance, 8 for 14, 102 yards, two touchdowns, a pick, two sacks, carried the ball one time. You apparently have had some sort of well, uh, reconsideration of the of the uh, initial assessment. What do you think after taking a closer look? Yeah, l- listen, this is why you watch the film. That's that's why I'm, I'm not always right, and you do got to watch the film at times. Now, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to get off the fact that I think they should start Trey Lance like right away week one because I think Shanahan can do that. I think he's that brilliant and can manage him and do it the right way. I also think, like, come on. Jimmy Garoppolo is being set up to fail like no other here. I mean, he still hasn't been named the starter, all those type of things. There's been no respect to him towards the offseason. I mean, as soon as Jimmy Garoppolo throws three incompletions, everybody's going to boom out of the stadium. But this is ultimately what I came back to that is going to scare the crap. Oh, not this one, not yet. This is a great throw. These are the good plays. This is Shanahan's going to love this, no, no doubt. We saw the touch pass. That's something we need to see more and more of. Because, you know, in my assessment, yes, too many balls are the 105-mile-per-hour fastball, and they're not catchable, right? Here's a nice, easy decision, but good job getting the ball out of his hands quickly, knowing where he wants to go with it. You know, you can, you can see on there, too. Ball always wobbles. It never spins real hard when he throws a ball back to, like, it's a not a real wide receiver-friendly, you know, type of thrower that way. You know, the athleticism here, nice job, opposite side, putting it in the right spot. So there's a lot of positive things here that he can do. And I know Shanahan can make it happen because Shanahan, you know, is with Josh McDaniels and Sean Payton and maybe another few guys I'm missing are the the best offensive minds in the sport. But I also know Kyle Shanahan and the fact that you got to be in the trust tree. There's only so much he can do. And I'm sure he looks at it and goes, I can manage Trey Lance on first and second down, Mike. But there's a sequence in the game where it's going to keep Shanahan up at night to go, wait, we had a few situations where it was must-throw situations, and I don't know if I can trust him. And to the point where you go, if it's regular season football, and we'll show these plays here in a minute, to where you go, uh, you might be down 17 nothing before the game gets started because he's made these type of mistakes. And that's always scary to a head coach, offensive play caller type. And I'm just kind of interested to see where this goes. So uh, where, where, where does your gut tell you it's going to go, given your knowledge of Shanahan and given everything you've seen well, from Lance? Where I, do you I think really, it goes? You know how we showed that post-game press conference yesterday? Like, I, I really got the sense that Shanahan was annoyed for one reason, because it was a chance for Trey Lance to take the job and win it. And he knows he did some things where he goes, damn, I don't know if I can do that yet, right? So uh, my gut still says I want to say he wants Trey Lance to be the starter and be the guy so he doesn't have to deal with like Jimmy started out 4-1 and one and it's not been that good and I'd like to bench him because I think ultimately the best of our team can reach its ultimate best with Trey Lance in there at quarterback. Yeah, we might lose a game or two more than we shouldn't, but we'll be a better, more Super Bowl contender when the playoffs come around. That's where I, I feel I err on Trey Lance. And I've seen him do it with RG3 back in the day and know he can make this happen like we talked about yesterday. And this team's way more talented than that Washington team he was there with, with, with his dad. But, you know, let, let's, like, let's look at some let's of these bad at the, plays. Let's right? look at the things yeah. that, made him, that may have made Shanahan a little concerned. This Go will, ahead. This will give him heart attacks. You know, first off, here's, this is the interception, right? So he throws the ball high, hard, too, that's too tough to catch. Muhammad Sanu's got unbelievable hands and as strong as, they come, as strong as they come. So if he can't catch it, and you can see, wide open, barely gets fingertips on it, and the ball has too much pace on it. There's got to be a little taken off there to make it a little bit more wide receiver friendly. Yeah, maybe the wide receiver makes a great catch. I'd like to see that. This is the, this is the very next pass play on the next series. I mean, this is look at the the linebackers hurt because they hit him in the stomach so hard. It's intercepted. You know, I like to think if that's Derwin James and starters, you know, Keith Murray, something like that, that's intercepted. Chargers got the ball again. Now, this is the very next pass play. It's two plays later. You know, I, again, this is almost a disaster. I'd like to think if that was Joey Bosa in the starting defensive line, that's a strip sack. You know, and that's where I'm sure Shanahan really got frazzled by 
the way Trey Lance looked. Not knowing where to go with the ball, escape, you know, your check downs. Here again, trying to make too much happen, fade away. I mean, this hit, hit the DB in the hands, right? So he's raw. We know that. I do know he's got high-end talent. But he hasn't played a lot of real NFL quarterback and didn't really have to in college either as far as playing that style of football. And I just know Kyle and the fact that, you know, at the very least, you don't need to be a superstar and make every play in the world. But if you could take care of the football, he can make it work. You know, Nick Mullins, let me just take you back to that. Remember Nick Mullins? He was going into a 16 start and people were going, he, he was second most passing yards in the history of football with a quarterback through 16 starts. Shanahan can make it happen, but what happened to Nick Mullins? He started taking too many chances, turning the ball over, and it became a disaster. So I just come back to that to where I think that threw a wrinkle into Shanahan's plans. I think that's why he was annoyed after the game. And I'm going to be interested to see where this goes because any play caller be scared through that sequence of plays. The one angle from behind the quarterback of the throw that was almost intercepted, I could envision Shanahan having that on a giant screen with Lance and only Lance in the room yeah. playing it back and forth saying, why did you think? What what made what, what you, do you think see? you're right. going to complete that pass? Right. What are you thinking when you throw that ball? Right. I, and, I, I think you know so a lot too. of times you're not thinking anything. A lot of times you're just in the moment. But but you have to program the player in the moment to make those decisions a little bit better. No doubt about it. You know I, that would look like it was one of those plays where, you know, hey, I threw an interception last drive. Coach has called this play for me all training camp. This guy's always open, and he made up his mind he was going to throw it to him no matter what. He's always open. You know, but the the problem is you practice against the Chargers all week. So they knew it was always open too. So they called a different defense. And now it's a little tighter of a throw. And of course, there's a pass rush in your face and you can't quite see and everything like that. Uh, so that's the thing that Shanahan, I believe, will have to start to feel good about with Trey Lance here, whether the last preseason game or, you know, whether it be practice, that he can trust them in the must throw situations to not ruin the game it doesn't always have to be perfect but he just can't ruin the game not in the nfc west with the way they are you know and 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 that's where i'm going to be interested to see see it go and just see how you know uh trey lance does this week in his last preseason game all right zach wilson his second preseason game against the green bay packers you took a closer look i have a feeling that you're not going to revise your assessment of Zach Wilson based upon the closer look that you took. Well, no, definitely not. I mean, listen, it doesn't take a scientist to figure this one out. You know it. You saw it. I mean, damn, he almost played perfect. You know, he just he he this is this is why I liked him. I just always felt coming out in the draft that his game is made for the modern day NFL. You know, quickness, can move, can throw the ball all these different ways and has a great feel of backyard football like we talk about with other great quarterbacks in the league right now, too. So you get to some of these plays and yeah, that's why I look at him and always thought, man, he's got some Aaron Rodgers qualities. Let's go. Let's roll the tape. Let me see some of the Zach Wilson stuff. I mean, here you go. Third and eight. Hey, just stand in the pocket. No big deal. Just throw a laser down the middle. Boom. He just throws it so effortlessly. And you see the ball spin, Mike. This is his worst play of the game. Bad throw, and I don't know why he threw it to him anyway. The crosser was open. But here, you know, again, nothing there. Roll to the right, both feet off the ground. That's like kind of the stuff we saw during his pro day workout where you're like, man, how did he throw that ball? I love this play because I don't think this play was supposed to go to the tight end. I think he's supposed to play to the right as he's looking, and now he goes, wait, they're not open, and I'm not supposed to be to this guy, but he's open and the safety's really deep, and I'm going to protect him with it. This is Aaron Rodgers right here. Not that this is high level, but just leaves the ball right out in front of him to where Tyler Croft never has to break stride. You maximize yards and plays and points when you throw the ball accurately like that and let your guy run after the catch. And that's, to me, where Zach Wilson's been very impressive. Pro-style offense, there's no game plan in plays, and you could see the talent and how the ball spins with him especially, Mike. You mentioned Aaron Rodgers. It reminded me of the time he got himself into trouble against Minnesota 2017, holding the ball to let someone yeah. get more Anthony open Farr. and got dragged down and right. broke his collarbone. So there is a point where, there is. where you just have to get rid of the football, but the idea of – not just all oh, the guys open, I'm going to throw it to him. Let him get a little more open so if he catches it, it's going to, it's going to turn into exactly. a much bigger play. Exactly. You know, 
Uh, we'll see where it goes with Zach Wilson. I mean, I don't expect the Jets to, Jets to reinvent the wheel or anything like that. But the one thing I think is very apparent through two preseason games is he's made for the NFL. He belongs here. He belonged as the second pick in the draft. And, you know, I think the talent shows itself, and I think the Jets are ecstatic with the way he's done in the preseason and in the training camp. And it really does seem like he's got more around him than Lawrence has in Jackson. Definitely. Doesn't it? Yeah, I do. You know, he's got, first off, Michael LaFleur, who, hey, listen, he came from a system that's tried and true, and we know it works. You know, Sala, the one thing that – here's the other good thing. Like, you know, we talk about identity and all that. I mean, the Jets run the ball almost too much in the first two preseason games. But Sala knows. I got a young quarterback, my defense. I want to play this game the right way. I don't want to have to depend on Zach Wilson to throw it 45 times a game and maybe disasters happen. So they do They do have an identity of we're going to run the ball, we're going to run play action, and then when if it gets in third and eight, we can put this guy in the pocket and he can make some plays. And I, I like the way things are going for the Jets, except that everybody on their team is hurt and f- dropping like fly, flies where I feel really bad for them. Yeah, Carl Lawson gone for the year, a pass rusher that they paid a lot of money to and had high hopes for. Jared Davis Man. suffered an ankle injury. He's going to be gone until the middle of the regular season, so they need to avoid further spreading of the injury bug in order to get the most out of their team this year. I still don't expect a huge season, right? but I think there's going to be more coming out of 2021 that makes us feel like they could become contenders yes. as soon as 2022. It feels like it's going to be a longer project in Jacksonville to get wherever it is that they're going to go. The yeah. only saving grace for Jacksonville, they're in the AFC South, and the Jets are competing with the Patriots, Ooh. the Bills, and the Dolphins, Yikes. who are on the rise. The Chiefs at the very top of the conference, two straight Super Bowl appearances, going for three in a row. Patrick Mahomes, we take for granted some of the great things he does. You were underwhelmed by his performance Friday night against the Arizona Cardinals. What did you think after taking a closer look at I, his place? I, I, you know, I don't want to, I'm not trying to sound the alarm or be a shock jock or anything like that. I, you know, I think part of this is I just been so spoiled. We've all been so spoiled by Patrick Mahomes. We see him, you know, complete, you know, throws that are on the uh, 10 on the difficulty scale, nine out of 10 times and all of that. But you know, I thought of just throwing the football is about as off as I've ever seen him. And then, you know, again, Mike, I'm just going to keep a close eye. Again, I'm not trying to start anything here, but you know me. I'm always looking at this stuff. I'm always looking at guys' bodies, the way they look, the way they run. I mean, that's part of what I grew up around. So so when Mahomes, I, 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 I want to continue to watch him move. And then here's the other thing that just was a little alarming to me. All they talked about was stay in the pocket, stay in the pocket during the telecast of the game. Almost like they knew he's not running the same, so we're really going to work on him staying in the pocket. I just thought that was weird. It came up like 20 times in the first quarter and a half. So, you know, when you start to say things like that, I start to go, wait, is something else going on here? But go ahead and roll the tape and let's just look at some of it, you know. He's still the man. I know that. But, I mean... That wasn't even close, you know, just used to seeing those play- plays be like, oh, completed or, you know, here again. And, you know, if we, I would love to show that one, too. I thought he looked weird running there. You know, I didn't even think he threw the ball with the proper mechanics on the run because he was protecting his toe. You know, there again, not really giving the guy a chance. You know, and again, I'm not trying to, like, sit here and, and say, you know, we know Mahomes is the man. It's just that. Uh, these are throws that I, I think even for Patrick Mahomes, he would come away and go, wait, I, I, I should hit this. I mean, hey, that's great. Vintage Mahomes right there. There's no doubt about it, what he does. I still don't think he looked as fast and explosive before the toe injury, though. And then you get to this. You know, again, I don't know. I'm going to take a closer look this week of him running. But there, I thought the burst was less than as well. And he, I think he thought he was going to be able to turn the corner and get some momentum going upfield to throw a laser to Demarcus Robinson. But for my eye, and again, maybe I'm wrong, uh, he couldn't turn the corner. He had to keep fading away, and then he couldn't even get the ball near close to, to the receiver. And look, teams are never going to be transparent about injuries. No. Case in point, Tom Brady had a torn MCL all of last year, and the Buccaneers successfully concealed it. But with this Mahomes toe... I, you know, I think that there wasn't, I don't know this, but my gut would tell me there wasn't any one moment that 
that created the injury. It's just overuse because you're constantly running and running and running and running and moving and, and you're in these shoes and they're constricting and it starts off as just kind of an aggravation right, and then something happens, you step on it, it gets worse. He had the injury really flare up against the Chiefs in the divisional round. The Browns, yeah. And uh, against the Browns, excuse yeah. me. But but then when he gets the surgery, just like three days after the Super Bowl, that tells you mm-hmm. that 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 he was limping to the finish line, literally. And this thing needed badly to be worked on ASAFP. And, you know, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. The surgery's always a success. Rehab's always a success. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And, you know, maybe he's finding out now that that he thinks he's fine running around doing his workout, but you put him back out there, with exactly. 100% healthy defensive players right. and you don't have that same that same little extra exactly that allows you to get the the the, the separation that makes you magical. Right. You feel like you're good, you know, you feel like you're doing well in practice, but you don't realize that you're really only going like 95% or 93% to your point to where now you get in the game and yeah, it's intense and the emotions are flowing and guys are trying to rip your head off. And now you're going, wait, hit six gear, hit six gear. And you don't quite hit it. Then the, yeah. So I, I, again, I'm not trying to sound the alarm. I'm just food for thought. Let's continue to watch this. Um, but yeah, I didn't think it was overly impressive last week, just the way it threw the ball. And yeah, I just thought even moving around, it didn't quite look the same. It's still really good. I know. He can still be really good with less than 100% toe or anything like that. But, you know, I think 100% Mahomes could make a game like the Bucks last year, like 31-27 instead of 31-9, right? Where he'd go, well, oh, you're, you're not out of this yet. He's going to make some plays and do all that. But like you said, he was limping to the finish line and just, I mean, still making unreal throws and stuff like that, but not, not himself, no doubt about it. I mean, he can be still a great quarterback. Yes if he is less mobile, but those hair on fire plays have become the trademark and the ability to fire the laser while running full speed. And as you said, you come around the corner, you get that momentum. So when you throw the ball, right, it doesn't peter out at the front of the end zone. It makes it back through to the receiver at the back of the end zone. These are little nuances that bear watching. We're not sounding the alarm. We're just kind of saying, yeah. we know what happened last year, right? We know he had the surgery three days after the Super Bowl. We, we need to see that, that he can run and move and and build that momentum to throw the football the way that, that that's all he saying. used to, exactly. or, or it is a reason to be concerned. All right, Tua Tagovailoa against the Atlanta Falcons, 16 for 23, 183 yards, a touchdown and a sack. How do you feel about where he is as he gets closer to the start of his second season? Uh, he's, been, he's been great in both preseason games. Other than that one interception down the middle against the Bears, he really has played – awesome so far. First off, I'm very impressed with the Miami Dolphins. I mean, just their overall look of their team. They remind me of like early Brady, New England Patriots teams, or even my dad's Giants teams. They're just like, they're big on both sides of the ball. They play really sound football. They understand situations and everything like that. And they're just going to out-execute you and out-physical you. And, you know, Tua doesn't have to be a superstar, but as long as he kind of hits what's there to be had and makes a handful of plays, they're going to be tough. And let's get to the Tua tape because, you know, Tua, quick in the pocket, quick quick release and this is what he can do he can play some backyard football tuck it hey second and three great got eight yards first down awesome you know his movement is great you know again just a little slide in the pocket but you know aggressive you know assertive decision there down the middle of the set we didn't see that last year last year i think he's scared to throw that ball i think he goes that's too tight I'm not going to throw it. I'm going to move to somebody else. Now he knows, wait, I got to throw that in that window and make that happen. And again here, in the pocket and knowing where the outlet is, looking downfield, trying to be aggressive, and then knowing, wait, I got a fail-safe plan underneath here with Salvin Ahmed to get the ball out. But, man, you see here every play, the one theme is movement and feel in the pocket. And it's going to be important for him because he's not the biggest guy. So he's got to find those lanes and alleys to throw the ball. And then that makes me happy when you see some of the power throws to go along with it. So, you know, I know everybody in the world thinks I'm a Tua hater and everything like that. I'm not. 
You know, yeah, he wasn't my. We favorite. are huge fans. I know. We are huge fans. But I've been pinned to that. I, I probably get more hate from Miami fans than any other fan base because they think I because I made Herbert in front of him. So, uh, but oh, either way, oh, and what happened last I year? I was right. I know, but nobody wants to say that. But either way, Tua is on the right track. I like the Dolphins, and I think Flores, you know, Brian Godsey, and I'm forgetting the other dam- uh, st- uh, offensive studs, uh, other coordinator down there. They have co-coordinators. They're doing a real good job, I think, making him feel comfortable and teaching him how to play. Eric Studsville, sorry, thank you, Pete. Uh, teaching him how to play quarterback in the NFL. One thing I have definitely detected, the long-suffering fan bases that think they have a young quarterback that could be a franchise guy, they get mad. Man, they do. At anyone who would suggest right. that that this isn't going to become a perennial pro bowler, potential Super Bowl champion, eventual Hall of Famer. Anybody that would suggest anything to the contrary, they want to plug their ears and say, la, 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 not listening, and they get they get mad. They want to kill the messenger. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Which is fine. But it's a small price to pay for not having to work for a little. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.